I've loved cars ever since I was a kid, and I dream that someday I might even drive some of these cars, maybe even make a car show of my own. Today, I'm on drive, and I feel like the luckiest guy in the world. And among my favorite shows, happens to be another show on drive, Chris Harris on Cars. So I sent him an email saying that. I mean, the guy's got an E24 M5, and he sent me one back. He didn't quite say my show was his favorite, but he did invite me to a secret location in Wales, which is where I went to meet him in person. Everything I know about the United Kingdom, I learned from an amazing documentary called Braveheart. But on the way to the hilltop Chris had given me to put into the GPS, I entered into the most beautiful countryside, undulating hills, Vermont with fog and sheep. I love veal, but not as much as the two cars Chris had waiting for us to drive on the hilltop at my destination. When JF said you were going to drop by and say hello, and I thought, they've got to come, I've got to take them to the pub, we've done that, but you don't get to see that. And I'm going to cook them some mutton, some really good Welsh old lamb. Um, what I wanted to do was present to you the cars that I thought would be of interest to you, because you don't have them where you live. Um, so I thought I'd line up a couple of um, uh, French hatchbacks, because that's not what you get in North America. Small, light, small amount of power, and you have to work hard to get the performance from them. And then Alex casually tells me that his father used to be the importer for Citroen in the States. And he's driven every old French car under the sun and used to have a 205 GTI 1.6. So, um, and an AX diesel. So <laughs> thank you for shitting on my past. Sorry. But um, so what I've done is I've bought this along. Okay, you might have seen this in an earlier drive video, but I spent a bit of time in this car. It's a Clio 200 with a cup chassis on it. Uh, and I, I'll coin my own phrase earlier. I think if you had to, if I had to take an essence of a car with me to my grave, I'd probably have this thing crushed up into really? a ball and stuff. Over any other car? Perhaps, because I think, I'm, I'm known to, to love these things. I love these things. I could talk to them about them forever, so I won't. But, but these, there's a, there's a ubiquity about these cars. They are, they are pretty much an everyman proposition. I know that they do cost some money, but if you want to go and drive this car, you'll always have a great time. And I, to, to turn that around, I think that if you can't find fun in this car, you're probably not a car enthusiast. You probably thought it was really funny to bring a GT3 3.8 and a Renault Clio Sport RS. Uh, you probably thought I'd find the irony between the two different cars being so different um, funny. But actually, uh, I really love small Renaults, small hot hatches. And I used to own a Renault Clio. and. I actually wanted to drive that car more than I wanted to drive the Porsche. Look at it. It's not even a weight. <laughs> I had the benefit of having an amazing excuse for not being that quick in the Renault. All right, would you do me a favor and just make sure that you keep reminding me to stick to the left, unless I'm too far left, in which case tell me to come back. Which is that I had to drive on the wrong side of the road, or as he pointed out, I always drive on the wrong side, and today I have to drive on the correct side. First of all, we're going to get your driving position sorted out. You like my driving position? No, I want you to sit more upright in this car. A little bit more upright. Think of, think of it as an English class. If you slouch in class, you're not going to concentrate. Right. Okay? Right, okay. We now we're away. All right. Can I go to the left? Go. No, go to the right. Put it up there. There we go. Do you ever refer to these as manual gearboxes or just call them stick shift? Stick. You know, also, I should say about my seating position is, and I hate to bring this up again, I drive using the Citroen SM seating position, yes. which is almost prone. <laughs> the steering wheel almost horizontal. <laughs> I like this car, you gotta keep it above 4,000 for anything fun to happen. You do have to rev it, rev it, rev it. Though. But, you know, it's really fun. And uh, I mean, it's super, uh, super twitchy. You know, everything's super responsive. I mean, it's, it's, you know, understand. I don't drive a lot of small cars, but it reminds me of my uh, 911 with half the power. It's a reasonable description. Yeah. There appears to be a box of bolts in the boot, but there are 
I asked them about that, but that's what Renault said that was stock, it came stock. <laughs> it's also a trick from my childhood in here, which is that um, when you've got a hot hatchback and you can't afford a sports exhaust, yeah. just always have the rear seats folded because it sounds noisier than Yes. See? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, the, the car's cool. I mean, like you said, there's a lot of torque. We gotta bring it out, and it's fun. I mean, what does this car cost? This is about 15, 16,000 pounds. So, so 25,000. Yeah, but I mean, it's a bargain. It's a bargain for that, but of course, you guys get some more value over there. Yeah, if, if you could buy this, but over there, back home, what do you buy that's even in the universe of this? A GTI? Is there anything that's close to this in the universe? A GTI? That's it. Yeah, what I mean, are they? 25, 30? So it's in the universe. I mean, how much is an FR, what's it called? The FRS? Oh, the GT86, is what yeah. you call it. Whatever. What's that going to cost? I think that's a bit more, isn't it? I don't know. Uh, the truth is, I'm not paying attention because I've owned a Subaru WRX, which cost at the time 25-ish. And to be honest with you, I'd rather own that than this. Yeah. And I mean, we don't have to go into the reasons, but that's a lot more value than this would be at 25. Oh, absolutely. But there's um, one thing that the that I find interesting about this car. If you want to take your brain out and just absolutely grab a car by the scruff of the neck. Can I pass? Is that legal? Uh, don't do it here because we're going to turn around just here and then we come back. Right. And there's nothing better than overtaking someone and then stopping immediately before the man to None of that made a difference because I nearly went off into the bushes and struck several sheep many times. Oh my god. What do you think he's doing? He's eating a bit of his own brain. Scouting for Peugeot. He's not clever. We're looking for the bright part of the gene pool. I love veal, but not when prepared by a Renault. So what do you think of the whole driving on Welsh roads vibe with sheep around you? So too? far, this is the, this is the best driver as we've seen in England. And, uh, oh, sorry, I'll put this in the ditch. No, that was the right oh. line. <laughs> okay, you say. Earlier in the day, he intimated that I would get to drive the Porsche. It did not come as a surprise after my experience driving him in the Renault that that opportunity somehow evaporated. So um, there's no real discussion or review of this car because you love it. Yeah, it's a bit predictable, really, isn't it? We should be in something else. So the I was about to warn you about traffic oncoming, but of course that's the wrong lane. <laughs> Is tired, <laughs> no, I genuinely just well as you know what, what people say about Americans driving on the wrong side. Did you do the gumball in Europe? Yeah. Okay. I did drive a Bentley GT uh, around the world with uh, a friend of mine who has one, a right-hand drive car. So your only experience of driving a right-hand drive car is driving around the world. But it was an automatic. You know, I'm not saying I've only read one book. It was War and Peace. Okay, um, but it was, uh, it wasn't all the way around the world, it was like, you know, part of the way. And also the cars, you know, it's paddle shift, so it's much easier. And, you know, I mean, it is what it is. These are, it's a predictable car, but it's a really good car. And this one ah. is worthy of special review, because it's blue. It's, oh, it sounds so So good. when they bring oh, out God. different color ones, I have to review them as well. Oh, God. But apparently next month they've got a green one, so I'll need that for a couple. I've got to be rigorous with this stuff. I need to know what this blue paint is like at speed. I cowered in mortal fear as we went up and down that road. What other car would you want? You want to make quiet this? Oh god, it sounds so... Oh god, sheep. Yeah, there are some sheep out tonight. The I mean, it's lambing season, so you've got a combination of stupid old sheep and stupid young sheep. Let's be serious. How frequently do you review cars on this road? <clears throat> Quite a lot. So, do you like what? Even like just the last crest, I would never do because I'm terrified of sheep. Uh, it's, there are different hill sheep in different areas of Wales, like Black Mountain Road. The sheep are a bit more stupid around here. I think the sheep are a bit cleverer. I think the Snowdonia. You know, but like clever are, are, you being, sheep. are you being snarky or do the sheep really not go into the road here? No, they do now and again. But you just can't live your life like that. Right. You know, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I may be at the point in my life where 
where I really enjoy a slow car and a soft ride. <laughs> it's quite firm on this road, isn't it? The reason I like Chris's videos is because as a writer, he is attempting to convey in videos things that one would only expect to learn in writing. I've always felt that the one way to perhaps present being a car enthusiast in the moving form in what I call a Top Gear era is to just A, not try to be them because they're, they're brilliant at what they do, you know, these Brilliant. guys are, and I'm not just doing this because I'm terrified of them ruining my life, but it's, they're brilliant at what they do. Never try and impersonate people that are brilliant because you'll only look like an ass. okay? You really will, and I would look like an ass if I tried to impersonate them. So, but there is a certain number of people that want to see something that's a bit more defined for the car enthusiast, you know? They want to see maybe a bit more expert um, feedback on, on the latest cars. They want to see a bit more expert driving. And may, I'm not saying I'm the man to do that, but maybe if that's where my strengths lie, you've got to do that. I also think that rather than go out and create content, you need to reverse the process. You need to, you need to create yourself an interesting life with cars, however you do it. It should be natural, otherwise it'll look forced. But create an interesting life with cars. And, and then share just, that. And just share that with people. And if you do that, in the, all I'm doing really is I'm doing what I used to do as a columnist in a car magazine. I grew up reading Car and Driver, Road and Track, all these amazing car magazines before the internet existed. Today, we see these amazing car reviews and Chris Harris is one of the people making some of the best. But Chris and I shared something which ran very deep. My whole life, I wanted to be a writer. Uh, I wanted to write about cars. And Chris, who makes these amazing videos, said exactly the same thing. He wishes he could spend more time writing about cars. And that's where he made a name for himself, writing for Auto Car and Evo. But because of JF and Josh and the other clever guys, Neil, that I work with, you've got the chance to share it on film. That's all. That's all, all I'm doing. It's not rocket science. I think there's a, a dozen, two dozen, three dozen, four dozen other people that can do it just as well as I can. I've just got, a, I'm lucky I've got a really good platform and somebody's given me the chance to do it. Within five minutes of meeting Chris, we're sitting on the hoods of these cars, you know, shoot the sh as if we were old friends. You get two old friends together and they can go on all night about anything. But of all the cars I've ever owned, the one that I derive the greatest driving pleasure from, and I have taken a track a little bit, but even cruising at 20 miles an hour, just my life is better for it, is this 87 Targa. It's got 120,000 miles, 3.2 liter G50 transmission. And for me, it's, it's the purest sports car I feel I've ever owned. But wait. There's more. <laughs> I felt like I was driving a cheap Ferrari. That has to be the essence of an Alfa Romeo. It has to that's offer right. you. It has to be a yeah, right. You have to feel that you've bought into something Italian that's offering you something so much more on an emotional scale that the Germans can't or the French can't offer you. Right. Because they're, let's face it, the Germans are always going to make a better car. Um, oh my God, yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Red SZ came yeah, towards yeah, yeah. us. I see. Il Monstro, did you not see it? Yeah, I was saying to Josh, look at that, look at that. And I, and I was saying it to you, I'm like, oh my God. I'm... But wait, there's more. Is it acceptable to just buy a car purely on aesthetic ground? I did own an Audi TT Gen 1 convertible with yellow stitching and red leather. <laughs> but wait, there's more. If, if we were to go and transport ourselves matrix style now to your SA. Yes. And, it had, and the battery had power in it. Yeah. Would it work? Yeah. Would it, how, how far could you drive it before it would need attention? All right, all, right, all right, let's be clear. I drove that car from Los Angeles to Ensenada, Mexico when I did the Baja 1000 last year. Yeah. And it ran, okay, it, the alternator belt uh, got twisted and broke, but was replaced for the equivalent of $3 at, in a barn by a Mexican who spoke no English. So that car can still be fixed by a random on the side of the road. Can this? He's digressed so massively from the question, we'll ask it again. How far was that? If we went there now. 300 miles. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be clear, my good friend Gail, who is a Frenchman who previously worked for VW, now works for Cadillac, designs interiors for GM, called me a few days, he owns a Citroen DS, and called me a few days ago and said, my friend, let us go make a road trip to Death Valley to see the eclipse. I have a new telescope. It'll be amazing. I'm like, awesome. Let's take the SM. He's like, are you crazy? It's French. 